Welcome to this first tutorial on flight planning. It's quite an involved subject and I'm going to assume that you know absolutely nothing about it and take you through it from the very beginning. First of all, we'll be flying from Los Angeles up to San Francisco and to do that we need maps. Now these maps are real aviation maps and these are provided by skyvector.com. It's a free website, you can go there and view this map and I highly recommend you do that. Now the map in front of us is called a World Aeronautical Chart. Now this map is for visual flight rules pilots. Those are pilots that fly under the rules that say you cannot fly through cloud. Now for an airline pilot they use the instrument flight rules which means that you can fly through cloud. So they don't use these maps. They use another map called an en route chart and this is what that looks like. Now you can still see Los Angeles is down here, Santa Monica, Ventura, and you'll notice in green is the outline of the coast of America. So let's zoom in now and take a closer look at the map and the symbols. First of all, let's take a look at these obvious circles here. Now the symbol in the middle should be familiar to you. This is a symbol for a VOR radio navigation aid. And you'll see out here to the left, this is a Los Angeles VOR. Underneath, I know the VOR has a frequency of 113.6 and it is the LAX VOR. Santa Monica VOR is up here as well, 110.8 and its name is SMO, it's IDENT and it's longitude and latitude as well. If we go back to the Aerosystem software, you'll see that we have the LAX VOR here and the Santa Monica VOR above it. So you can see that the symbols match, making life a little bit easier for you. If we go back to the maps, we can see that there are some other symbols here that are very important to us. First of all, there's one here called SAD, and it's a triangle. There's another one down here called EXERT, and a triangle, and MURMUR, and a triangle. Now these aren't radio navigation aids, these are fixes in space. They don't physically exist, but they do exist with a longitude and latitude and a given a name. If we go back to the Aerosystem software and I bring up the waypoints and we zoom in, you'll notice that we also have the same triangles, excerpt and murmur. Let's take a look at this black line coming out from the VOR. Now this is an airways route or a path that the aircraft follows and it has a number of symbols along the way. First of all, 276. This is 276 degrees magnetic coming away from the LA VOR. And you can see there is a little symbol up here. This represents magnetic north. You can see it on the Santa Monica VOR as well. So if I come around the outside of this circle for 276 degrees, I hit this path here. Now this path will fly me all the way to this fix. and the distance is 18 nautical miles. So if we have a look at another one, we have a look at the LAVOR flying out to this fix at Murma. If I fly a heading of 246 degrees magnetic, underneath the distance is written as 14 nautical miles. Now the boxes here represent the airways. Now this V299 is a path that comes out of the LA VOR to this first fix and you can see if I move the map down the V299 airway comes across to the Ventura VOR then it tracks northeast up to the next VOR at Fillmore and then north following a heading of 347 for a distance of 23 miles up to the Gorman VOR. So you can see that we actually have a defined route coming out of Los Angeles through the V299. So we fly from here, 299 to this fix, 299 to Ventura, up to the Fillmore VOR and up to the Gorman VOR and from there we can change routes V233 V137, so we can follow the airway system to fly wherever we wish to. But we'll be following the V25 route, so let's just take it back to Los Angeles. 
So it will come out of LA to the excerpt fix up to the Ventura VOR. It will then fly along to Dino up to the next VOR here which is the San Marcos VOR and so on. So let's have a look at the navigation display on the Aerosystem software. If I zoom out you'll notice that the SMO VOR, Santa Monica and the Ventura VORs disappear. That's because there are two strengths to the VORs, two ranges to the VOR signal. This is a high range signal and the Santa Monica VOR and Ventura VOR are low range signals. So their power output is not as strong. So when we go above 40 nautical miles on the map range here, we go to 80, these low, low power VORs drop off. If I just increase the range, we can see LA is down here and the Oakland VOR, which is where San Francisco is, is up here. So we'll be flying northwest along this route. If I bring up the airports, you can see that we have the coast of North America here. So quite a lot of information displayed on the ND in the Aerosystem software and also in the real 737 as well, of course. So LAX airport just here and Santa Monica's here. Bring up the nav aids. You can see that we've got LAX here, Santa Monica here as well. So they're the maps you'll be using, the en route charts. They're literally printed on paper. If I zoom out you can see the chart itself and it has legend down the side. There's another type of chart here called the high route chart. Now the high route chart follows a similar system to the low route charts but they're uh, mainly for high flying jets. So jets are J for high flying aeroplanes. If we go back to the, to the low route charts they're for low flying aircraft but you can still follow those charts as well. So that's a, an overview of the maps and the charts. That's all you'll need to understand to get you flying with the Aerosystem software.